Yo, what's up, everybody? It is Friday, October 4th. Sorry for the late video, but I had some things I had to do. I wasn't able to get to this. So, it looks like my bond trade, uh, I'm not going to say right now it's unraveling or it's in trouble, but it definitely uh, came under some, some big time pressure today. I want to talk about what's going on. The problem, not so much, you know, in the last couple of days I've been talking to you guys about process, stick to the process, stick to the process. So I, I'm going to, you know, be consistent with that because if I'm not consistent with that, then you have no right to listen to me, okay? My process with the bond trade was a slowdown in the economy, which will prompt the Fed to cut interest rates further because that is the classic you know, institutional central bank response to a slowdown. They, they try to regulate it with interest rates, just like they did with the inflation to raise interest rates. And I was right on that one. But the problem is like, you know, the Fed sets the price. It's the monopolist. Like uh, the, the whole premise was that the slowdown would cause the Fed to continue to cut interest rates. And that still may be correct, the premise. But today, obviously, we saw a very strong uh, employment report. I, I, I was uh, surprised, as was pretty much everybody uh, who forecasts these things. Um, However, I did see in, in my data, which I send out every week in my MMT Trader Report, I did talk about a very, there was a spike in daily unemployment benefits at the very beginning of September, and then it came way down. So obviously there was some kind of a, an event or an aberration or something in early September that caused a spike in unemployment benefits, and then it came down. Nevertheless, the, it was a huge number and we had a big sell-off in the bond market. And the problem now is, you know, this Fed, as I've uh, spoken about so many times, the Powell Fed, they, they basically just listen to the market or they listen to pundits or economists that are held in high regard, not because they're any good, but just because they're kind of They've been around for a long time. I'm talking about people like Larry Summers and people like that. These kind of mainstream e economists who really don't understand how the monetary system operates. But they, they have a platform. They're known. They're on every TV show. They advise uh, the White House, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm talking about. So today, what happened with that number is that the... Initially, the probability that was kind of forecast in Fed fund futures, um, it went to like pretty much 100% probability of a 25 basis point rate cut at the November meeting as opposed, you know, a week ago, it was like a 54% probability of a 50 basis point rate cut, the jumbo rate cut. That's what they were all freaking out. They, they were all cheering about, right? But today, early anyway, after the number, it went down to a 25 basis point rate cut. <clears throat> and, um, you know, the odds there went pretty much to 100%. But then later in the day, we started to see creeping up the probability of no rate cut. And then Larry Summers comes out and says, the Fed made a mistake, never should have cut rates by 50 basis points. I don't know if he means like that was just too much or they should stop, but this is a problem because if Powell listens to that stuff, Powell listens to the market. Look, the probability right now of a zero, uh, a zero rate cut, of no rate cut is like 4.5%. Now, mind you, it was zero, but now it's 4.5% and that could grow next week. We have CPI next week. And if that's not really, really weak, even if that's in line with, with forecasts, which I don't know what the forecasts are right now, it might be like up 0.2 or something like that. Um, then the Fed's going to pause, man. The Fed's going to pause. And frankly, I'll be honest with you, despite the contraction year over year in net government transfers, which you know I've been talking about for months, I do not really see, there, there's not a lot of evidence of a slowdown right now. Now, you know, these things take, number one, they take time to develop, and I'm not trying to, 
uh, create excuses here, okay? They, they, they take time to develop, number one. Number two, the leading flows, those are those fiscal flows uh, before the, you know, the taxes are taken out. Those are still very strong. So <clears throat> for now, that's a factor. Now, I'm sticking with this trade for now. Um, I do think we're going to see an economic slowdown, which would now um, it would shift the expectation back again to more Fed rate cuts. Uh, that's number one. Number two, the other interesting thing uh, that I've seen, and this is more technical in nature, it has to do with positioning in the 10-year uh, 10-year Treasury note futures contract. You have a record short position by leveraged funds. Leveraged funds are these large speculative funds. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, you have a record short position of over 2 million contracts. That's something like a 200 billion face value short position in treasuries. I mean, it's enormous. I don't even know how they finance this thing. These guys are not dealers. Dealers have inventory of bonds against their position. These guys are not asset managers. Asset managers have trillions of dollars under uh, management. These are speculative funds. Everything's up on margin, okay? So um, they got a massive short position, which basically they're not making any money on because I went back and I looked today from the day that they flipped short uh, until now, and they built that gigantic, massive record short position it's basically at the price we are right now in the 10-year treasury. Today, they made a little money when it, it broke down to under 113. But at 113, they're basically breaking even, all right? Uh, on the other hand, you got dealers. These are the Wall Street banks who have been covering their short position since May of this year. And they're, they're almost flat. I mean, they had like a half a million net short position they have pretty much nothing. I think it's down to like 24,000 contracts. It's nothing. And institutional asset managers are, um, they're long the market in a big way. The other thing in the banking data that I saw that just came out today on Friday, uh, in the week ending September 20, I think it was the 25th, banks were again big um, acquirers of Treasuries, uh, agencies, all kinds of securities. Treasuries, agencies, MBS. So the banks are buying the physical uh, uh, treasuries. Uh, it was a big factor in the increase in bank credit for the week. By the way, loans were basically flat. The only thing that went up in loans really was industrial, uh, commercial and industrial loans. And that's probably because uh, businesses were stocking up on inventory before the longshoremen strike. So, look, uh, I don't think we're going to have a resurgence in inflation. Um, and again, I'm, I'm going to qualify that because I don't know what's going to happen with this Israel-Iran thing. If they're going to blow up the oil installations, if they do that, then, you know, it's a whole other discussion. But in terms of trying to uh, make a similar argument to what happened in the pandemic, you know, we don't we don't have the port shut down anymore. We don't have massive uh, a massive new fiscal injection. We're running at the same level that we were running in you know last year. Basically, this continuing resolution just uh, cements in place. The, the spending that we had uh, in uh, fiscal year 2024, at least through December 16th. <clears throat> so I don't see massive inflation. Um, net government transfers are going to continue to fall. And so I'm sticking with the trade. I, I mean, look, am I stressed out about it? Yeah. I mean, you better believe it. I'm human like everybody else, even though I get I, I do a lot of videos, you know, helping you guys or <laughs> teaching you guys how to like reframe the, the stress into something positive. But it, I'll be honest, it affects me. Yeah, 
Like, I didn't think we were going to get such a big pullback. I was expecting a pullback because I think that the market uh, discounted the, the rate cut going into it in mid-September. And I definitely expected a pullback, but this is just kind of like compounding now. So got to watch the data next week. Going to be another big week with CPI on Thursday. Um, look, all of the, all of the um, 50 basis point rate cut expectation has been eliminated. There's even expectation of no rate cut. So we went from a psychological level here to a psychological level here, at least in terms of how the monitors view this thing. The other final thing I'm going to say, uh, I think I already said it, massive speculative short position. Yeah, I did say it. Massive speculative short position. The only ones basically selling this market are the speculators. I just mentioned that the banks, you know, at least in the week ending September 25th, big buyers of securities, treasuries, agencies, I not to review, well, I'm repeating myself, but I just uh, said it. Um, it's something to think about. Anyway, that's it for today, folks, and um, hope you have a great weekend. Don't forget to please, if you can, if you uh, choose to, like and subscribe the videos. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. And uh, don't forget to go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial to MMT Trader. Have a great weekend. Bye.